I do, like this old Yamaha golf cart. And you're pressing the gas, and it's sounding like it's hesitating. Like that. What you need to do is clean out the carb. That's exactly what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna limp this thing back to the shop, and I'm gonna show you exactly what it's like to clean out a carburetor. Now, this carburetor could be on anything, could be your lawnmower, could be your weed eater, could be your chainsaw. But it's pretty much all the same, and it's pretty much all the result of one thing. And what that is, it's letting the engine sit with ethanol fuel in it. So, welcome back. Let's go get into the shop. Let's go get her cleaned out. Because I don't know how much more of this I can take. Oh, we just made it. Okay, let's go. Well, we're in the shop. I got the carburetor off my Yamaha golf cart. The Yamaha out there, I believe it's a 1982, somewhere in there, either 82 or 83, two cycle engine. And so what you're going to notice on the carburetor that's different than some of your four cycle or some of your newer go-karts is you'll see an inlet for oil injection. So I had to disconnect that hose in addition to the fuel line, in addition to the air box. And uh, as a result, this is what you're left with. So first and foremost, this is very dirty when I'm cleaning a carb. If you're trying to clean the inside, you can't have the outside dirty. So I take a rag, I like to clean it off first and foremost. And we'll try to get it as clean as we can. And obviously you won't be able to get all of it if, uh, if there's some little crevices with gunk in it. And so what I do after I take time to clean it is I use some brake cleaner. Okay, so this brake cleaner here, I just get mine a Canadian tire. You can get it anywhere. This stuff's great. It helps to keep the outside clean. And uh, ultimately, it gives me a good basis to start with. So I'm going to finish cleaning this off, and we'll dive into the inside. Now, another good thing that works for cleaning these carbs is old toothbrushes. It helps you to get into all the nooks and crannies here. And try your best not to, not to knock the dirt into either side of the carburetor. One thing you're going to notice here is you are going to get some fuel that's going to leak out here. The bowl on the bottom of the carburetor contains fuel. And so if you just remove this from the machine like I did, then the fuel will leak out and hence why I have a rag here so that it can be absorbed. And you don't have to clean the inside. You shouldn't have gunk in there like uh, dirt anyways. If you have dirt in there, you've got problems. You probably need to put a uh, air filter back on because it's either been chewed away by squirrels or you didn't have one to begin with. So you should definitely not have any type of residue like dirt or anything on the insides of your carburetor. If a little bit gets in there while you're cleaning right now, well, that can happen, but try to keep it out of there. All right, and these screws here, they're set in a certain position for a reason. Try not to adjust them, like try not to move them. If your cart was running in general, like it was, it was running maybe poorly, but it was running, try not to adjust them to start. Just leave it how it is. What I find nine times out of 10 is that after a carb clean, which we're about to do right now, regardless of where those uh, were set, your machine will run 100% better. So that's pretty good. I got most of the hardened gunk off. And so once you're satisfied with that, which uh, I think I'm pretty satisfied with, what you can do is you can then use the brake cleaner. And the brake cleaner is obviously designed for brakes, but it works for this too. Gets all the uh, oily residue off the outside. And keep in mind, I have never taken the carburetor off this particular uh, golf cart since I've had it. It's always run good, and so why mess with a good thing, right? So that dirt has probably been on there for quite some time. Now the brake cleaner will evaporate according to the, according to the uh, bottle there, but I like to just wipe it off anyways. 
Okay, once you get it to a point where it's relatively clean like this, then you can start working on the inside where your actual problem lies. So, what are you gonna do first? First and foremost, you're gonna need a socket. In this case, I'm using a 14 millimeter socket. I'm gonna remove the bolt on the bottom, which will allow this bowl to drop. So we're gonna grab a hold of this, make sure it's in the loosened position. And you will get some fuel that comes out here, so make sure you have a rag handy. Okay, you can see the residual fuel there. You guys see that? It's probably what's causing the issue. Now the reason I have a rag here, stuff is less likely to bounce around and go on the floor where my old eyes can't see it. Now looking from the uh, bottom side down, what you're going to see here is uh, something like this that should be moving freely up and down. This is called your float. Underneath of it, and you guys won't be able to see it, but underneath of it, pretty much under that flap of metal where my screwdriver is pointing, you'll see a pin. And actually, this just is about to come out, so let's take it right off. There we go. Here's the pin I'm talking about. You'll see it right at the very tip of my, my uh, screwdriver. That pin should go up and down. Okay, it should move. If it doesn't move, oftentimes it'll get stuck in the down position, meaning depressed all the way. If it gets stuck that way, you're going to have some issues. So make sure it moves freely. Mine appears to be moving freely. Another thing to look at with this carburetor, see that the seal here, so see this black O-ring, make sure it's in place on this bolt. Make sure your washer's in place, it's in orange there. You can get rebuild kits for most carburetors, do a bit of a search, go to your parts store, and uh, oftentimes they can hook you up. Anyways, what you're most concerned with after you've taken the bowl off, or even if you left it in place, is what's down here in the very center. Down there in the center, Using a flathead screwdriver down here in the center, you're going to have to remove something and you want to be very careful. These are uh, made of very light metal, so you want to make sure not to strip it. I like to clean my tools before I jam them in here. There, so that one was in there pretty solid and if you can imagine if no one's cleaned this in quite some time, it probably will be. So I'm loosening this off here. And eventually, what you're gonna have fall out is this. Okay, so you're gonna have a few different looking, uh, this would be called an emulsion tube. You're gonna have a few different looking parts depending on your carburetor setup. Uh, for me, obviously, this is what comes in this one. So what you wanna do with this emulsion tube is you wanna first and foremost, Make sure that the hole going all the way through it is clear. In addition, you want to make sure all these small holes here are clear. How I like to do that is using my carb cleaner, so carburetor cleaner. You can simply put it into the hole, position it into something to catch it, and just make sure you can spray directly through it. Now, in order to get all that orifices, all those holes cleared, what I, what I often do will block the very bottom hole with my finger. And you can do either hole, so I'm going to block that one. Put my, uh, put my nozzle into the end and then spray and just watch your eyes position it away from yourself. See how it comes out? You guys see that? See how it wants to come out all the sides? You're going to want to do that until you can guarantee all those holes are open. They're all uh, not being blocked. Now another way you can do things, if you have um, a MIG welder at home, with a MIG welder, you can often get these little, uh, how do I describe it? It almost looks like piano wire uh, pieces. And basically it's a small piece of wire of different, different gauges, different thicknesses, different diameters. And you can poke them through those holes because they're nice and small and stiff. Okay, so let's assume that's cleaned out. Okay, I know it's not fully yet, but I will. Next thing you're gonna do, come on back to your carburetor and have a look right down through that hole. If you were to have a look through there, there shouldn't be anything left in there. And as a result, when you spray carb cleaner, you should have it go all the way through, all the way through that tube and ultimately drip out both ends. And this one it does. Okay, so I just had some of that carb cleaner dripping out. Nope, make sure that stays on. 
Okay. And don't be stingy with a carb cleaner. You only get one opportunity while this is apart to get it clean. You can also take the carb cleaner at this point. You can clean out all the inside of the carburetor, all the moving parts. Okay, and oh, before I forget, this particular carburetor, I'm noticing it has some sort of a jet on the side. So see it here on the side. Oftentimes it's on the bottom in addition to the emulsion tube. This one happens to be on the side. And so with a clean tool, flat edge, straight edge, flat head, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll very gently get, get in there. Disconnect that, take it apart. And if you have a look here, this will this will likely be a jet for the carburetor. So uh, what you need to do is, it's probably hard to see, but there will be a hole down the center of that jet. You want to clean that out with carburetor cleaner, like so, nice and clean. Another thing you can do, let's pretend you're having a hard time getting the holes in these uh, emulsion tube and jet cleaned out. You can put them into a glass jar, like so. And this jar looks a little dirty, so. Let me, uh, let me get a clean jar. Be right back. Uh, what we got over here? That one's better. So, as I was saying, you get a clean jar, put your pieces into the bottom, and then try to fill the bottom a little bit with carb cleaner so that they're fully immersed like so, and I don't want to fill this whole jar because I'll be wasting a lot, and so just get it positioned, and then I like to just lean it up here. Uh, you might want to let that sit for a few hours or a day or so. Anyways, you let that get clean. What you're gonna do once that's fully clean, you can then reassemble. Now, while you wait, you can give the inside of the bowl a good cleaning here. And try not to let your jar with your components roll everywhere. Anyways, clean the inside of the bowl with that same carb cleaner. What you're trying to do is to remove any type of contaminants that were in there. Sometimes you get the breakdown of the fuel containing ethanol. Sometimes that breakdown leaves a bit of a film and that film can gum up the uh, various orifices and holes inside your carburetor. And then, although a carburetor is a very simple piece of uh, Piece of equipment it can still uh, it can still malfunction with that gumminess of the uh, breakdown of the fuel anyways that's nice and clean that's good to go and I think everything else with the exception of the bowl has been cleaned and as always you should probably wear gloves here okay and just be careful all these little parts Keep in mind, this is a 1980, what I say, 81 or 82 machine. Getting parts for this may be more difficult than simply getting parts for a brand new machine. So take your time, be gentle, and don't break anything. All right, so I let all these little parts here soak for a few hours. And so we should be good to go now, and these should be ready for reinstallation. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna flip the carburetor upside down. Keep in mind, I have thoroughly washed all of this with carb cleaner. So I'm gonna put this little guy here, and this one is that needle that goes up and down. You may or may not be able to see it. Let's get my screwdriver out. So right off the tip of my screwdriver here, there's a little needle here that should have some spring to it. If that little thing there is not springing back, well, your float is not gonna function properly. Double check that it's working before you reinstall it. Dropping it right back down in there. You guys can see it there. What I like to do while I'm disassembling things that I'm not overly familiar with is take pictures. Uh, in this case, I didn't take pictures because I am familiar with carburetors, but that, uh, that could be a tip to help you guys. Anyways, that's that. <clears throat> you can put your float on at this point or you can decide to, uh, to wait. I'm gonna put it on because it's handy. This little rod here will go into place and hold that float there. We get it lined up properly there we go okay so you can see it just sort of sits in there and what am i missing we've got the jets so let's get those jets put into place 
Okay, so first things first, let's drop the emulsion tube into place. Okay, and it shouldn't uh, require any force to go down in there. Once it's down in there, you're simply going to use your flathead screwdriver. And I'm going to use my other one because it's a bit better shape. It's got a nice crisp edge on it so I don't round off the slot on that emulsion tube. Okay, and just enough, you're not, you know, you're not... You're not torquing her to the point where she'll never come out again. You're torquing it to the point where it's firm and snug and in place. So that's that. That's the emulsion tube. Next one, we'll put the jet into place. And I like to hand thread them first. That way I guarantee it's going in the right, right spot. Clean off my screwdriver again. going to be gentle here there nice firm and snug so that's that and then we'll put the uh, put the bowl on okay I already cleaned the bowl out so we'll simply position it into place as I mentioned before if you needed to replace that black o-ring this would have been the time to do it mine looks like it's in fine shape so I'm just going to reuse it that goes like that having a look at this this looks fine there's no residue that's going to get in anywhere Gave it a good spray with the carb cleaner already. Make sure that little gasket's in place, the orange one. And once again, that's a 14 millimeter wrench to snug that baby up. Good. That's it, carb is fully functioning. Everything looks clean. This is ready for reinstallation. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, then we'll see how she runs.